they've got to take their opportunity on attack here. They do. I think for Secret, the we've seen them have a pretty decent game on this map. I distinctly remember this is back when they were cycling through positions and we had Keenan, I believe, playing hard support in the game, playing things like a Thermite. And there was a couple of rounds where he really pops off and charged his way through the map, picking up three or four kills. But if we look at recent form for Secret, I know you're looking towards the top of your screen to see a few, a few dubs there, a few L's along the way. It's looking a little bit shaky. And they are one of those teams stuck in the relegation scrap. Any kind of point today will be massive for them. They're currently three points clear of Heroic just underneath them, who themselves have got a lot of work to do. But let's focus on these bands coming through. HG2 starting off with the Flores, the Thatch following through with, I imagine, a Mirror. No Valkyrie. Maybe the Mirror then will be the second or final ban that comes through in a second. Yeah, I'd agree. We'll probably see the Mirror band out. Uh, we get the occasional Wamai and one or two others on on Chalet, but I would expect to see the mirror here going from G2 as the founder. No, it is the Whammer. There we go. Slightly less popular, but understandable nonetheless. Just giving less opportunity for those defenders to deal with the thrown utility that could come in from the attackers. G2 are starting on the defence, so they're obviously comfortable in dealing with that. We're likely to see a reasonable amount of Jaeger played, if that's the case, given that there's no option for Whammer on there. But... What are nades potentially going to get brought along by Team Secret? That could be the answer here. With Wamai going, you've got Iana coming in, you've got Finky, you've got Sledge, you've got Maverick. That's a lot of nades, Des. The one thing I lent to when I saw that band straight away was thinking along the lines of the Capital. Now, for G2, they've played Capital a number of times. It's the sort of thing that we have seen Hungry bring, especially on maps like Clubhouse. It's been quite an option for them. And I think you may see it really come into effect in the second half of the map. Otherwise, I agree with you completely. It is going to be Nade City up in Chalet. First round is going to start out in Bar and Gaming. Nothing really worth touching home about right now on either side. I think outside of looking at those six Nades being brought along by by the attackers. Another top left to your screen says eight. That is a lie. There are definitely only six. And on the other side, things also looking pretty standard for a map of Chalet, I think, Ace. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Secret choosing to swap the Finker out, bring the Zephyr along. They obviously felt that they had sufficient utility in the uh, in the shape of six nades. But of course, Zephyr bringing along the concussive and explosive grenades that will fire out of her grenade launcher anyway. So she still has that sort of similar capability, not necessarily the same in terms of damage dealt. It's not as easy um, to put them in there and, and kill an operator, for example, but uh, still very useful nonetheless. Now, interestingly, we've got Kayak bringing along the Frost. Fairly common pick for this site down in Bar and Gaming. You'll have the Pogmats, as they've been referred to many times. And Was it Citizen who started that? I think it might have, I think it might have been, but once again came true in the last game. We saw Kaoxis. They win rounds. The thing is, they are perilous, There's in those final 20 seconds when your mind is just elsewhere it is so easy to stray into one of them and so important for attackers to take them out when they have the opportunity you're all like our mind sweep when we play together it's like tim just walk through that room just walk through there pick up any frost mats. if tim gets through all right on the other side you know there are no frost mats present that's the way that we tend to gauge him and use him as a bit of a mind sweeper for the team is the only way i can really think of it the secret though it's going to be a bit of a start up on the south side here as expected you will see them looking to try and get control of mezzanine work their way inside a library look for that full vertical control Control before thinking about going for a push inside of the site. You see Pat Ball and Seven up towards the north, Gonfi out on the balcony, lots of droves running around on the downstairs as well as up on the mezzanine too. So this kind of north, northeast side seems to be where they're starting things out. It's going to require burning through the ADSs, burning your way through the shields that have been set up, the laser gates. Still lots to deal with here despite having over half the round remaining. Jonka holding down the mezzanine halfway in and looking to support Hungry, who is on the library stairs and vice versa. They're just going to try and keep each other locked into those positions to prevent that verticality coming in from library down into site. Now, Secret, they've got control over office and piano here. Not yet burnt out that Aruni laser gate. That's going to remain for the time being. Kendrew will take out the one on the window there of library stairs. In comes Ooh, one of those double. nades. In comes a second, and that is going to down Hungry. We did comment coming into the game the level of explosive utility that was being brought by Team Secret. No surprise with Wamai banned out. There was a year grade yes on the stairs just at the top but it is easy to deal with it just get one throwable oh, through good. and then the nades can rain Packball manages to find two onto hungry and kayak taking out the downed man and then taking out his buddy as well in comes more kills kendrew and gonfi and all of a sudden g2 find themselves in a 1v5 
Citizen finding at least one back here. The question is how much more damage can he do? Apparently at least one more. Kendrew also going down and knows where the push is coming from here. Kendrew not yet being res. Now he is, so it should go back into being this one versus four. Sleven finding the god shot at the end to shut down the man himself. Four left alive for the side of Secret. All off the back of Papal's great push inside of Mud. It was a really decisive push, just getting in there, took the opportunity as Kayak was just tentatively thinking about picking Hungry up. Packball, he was the one really hungry, came in and found himself a feast all over the floor and got himself two, and that really propelled Team Secret to round one. It was a good attack onto Bar and Gaming. They're going to be attacking onto Kitchen and Dining this time around. G2 deciding to switch things up. They're not too happy doubling down. Obviously felt that they weren't really close enough there, so they're going to mix things up. We will see a reasonably similar defence, but instead of library and mezzanine heavily this time, there will be more presence over in master and office. Again, just trying to play vertically above the site and hold on to that ancillarium probably for as long as possible. Seems to be the way. I mean, vertical defense on this side has been the big go-to for the longest time now, although sometimes teams have left one or two players on site and you find them being chewed out from the south side. So we'll keep a close eye on where the focus comes in for the side of Secret. Do they try and push up towards Solar and work their way down for an all side take? Or what most teams have done is get control of Lobby, look to open up below, put some pressure on the top side as well to force those attackers away, maybe even send one or two in to go chasing them down, and then look for your execute as soon as you've got control of office. So there are options and for Secret, given where all the drones are currently positioned. It does look like we're going to see some focus on the lobby side. Heading into the action phase then, Secret going to be approaching very, very quickly. Got the Finker on side this time, so once again, six nades on board. This time, Kendrew dropping out the Maverick and bringing along the Thermite instead. Just maybe thinking towards that verticality, possibly. Exothermics may be slightly overkill for opening up that soft floor, especially when you've got Pipeball on side, but they'll also be thinking about the wall from that exact wall, thank you very much, from main door into the site. That's likely going to be the target of the Thermite. He could also look to open up the office balcony wall as well to try and aid in that yeah. top floor clearance. What an absolute freebie for Slebin there. Knows that Kayak is playing inside a split, just opens up the soft wall that's so many people forget is a soft wall. Opens it up with the skeleton key and just absolutely slaps Kayak out of the round. Gets reinforced when they're defending bar and gaming by a lot of teams for that exact reason. You don't want someone just blowing you out through lobby and normally ensures you can play there a lot safer, but with the reinforcements being committed upstairs and instead out towards the site, you see the exact outcome, the punishment that you get from not making sure that is covered. Although it does run into Virtue on library stairs, who shuts him down about 20 seconds later or so, neutralizes it out. Another trade coming through from the Southern Gonfi duo here as well, a four versus three for Secret. Not looking bad, again, considering how much time they've got to play with and six nades still in the back pocket ace. Every single kill so far this round has, has happened because they don't know where the other person is every time kayak unaware that Slebin's coming up and open that wall Slebin runs onto stairs has no idea that virtue's there virtue tries to push upstairs doesn't know there's a man in gaming if one of these teams can start to take control of the information game they might just find themselves a big advantage now then thermite has done his work kendrew he's got the office balcony wall open he's got the dining room wall open time for secret to go to work and think about getting some control over sight it's the starting point they want, right? They've got enough they can pressure upstairs without pushing in itself. And now, as you as you say, the attention does turn to what do we need to do inside of sight. Well, Ace, it's time to start using those frag grenades. Are they shield in place? There's a few playing on sight itself. Let's just get yeeting them into sight and see what plays out. The smokes come first. The frag's still being held in back pocket. Citizen rotating his way back down the back for some backup as Hungry hits the deck. The plank going down. Citizen, if he went for the right door, may have seen the man. Will he go through the smoke? It looks like he'll try. But does he see anyone? The smoke has been committed and so has the plant. Gonfi finds one with a frag coming out. They've still got three in back pocket. Citizen finding one. Does he know about the man to his left? I think surely he should, but can't see him stepping out. So with that vertical control, with the lateral one, this round is done and dusted. As indeed, it was another frag that got a down from Packball. Two, air quotes, nade kills in the round and another successful attack coming out for Secret. Yep, nicely worked from Secret. Got the access that they needed quickly with good work from Kendrew uh, and then really didn't mess about. It was only 30 seconds or so afterwards that they were pushing directly into sight. As you 
you said, putting those frag grenades to use, keeping G2 at bay whilst that diffuser went down. Citizen made a valiant effort towards the end. I think he was aware of the sledge on his left, but he knew that he was being pressured from the right as well, and he was just trying to balance those two things as best he could. He managed to find himself one, but it was the best that he could do. Team Secret so far, best foot forward, 2-0 in this one on Chalet as we head into round three. It's looking really good for them so far. The perfect start, you might say. And in fact, this is how the last game started out, if you recall, between Virtus Pro and Heroic, not just about half an hour ago. The first couple of rounds very decisively leaning over towards Heroic side on the attack. And then the timeout came through from Virtus Pro and things started to balance out a lot better from there. In fact, Heroic struggled really to get any opening kills. So I think for this round, if it goes against the side of G2, that's when you're calling that timeout and saying, right, boys, breathe now. Stuff is not going according to plan. Let's have a conversation about this and see how we can get the reset going through. Otherwise, Secret will just keep on bowling over G2 in every single one of these rounds. Yet again, six frags on side, the same setup as we've seen previously. This one shouldn't be too alien, admittedly, coming out for Team Secret because we saw it just a couple of rounds ago. It was pretty comfortable for them, if you recall. That push down towards lobby stairs, two frag grenades going down, the flank coming out of Pat Ball inside of Mud. So small things, I think, for both, t both teams to be learning from to speed things up a little bit or at least to protect themselves better. And I guess time will tell. Bar and Gaming will be our site again as we are underway. Double window already shot out. Team Secret just looking to apply pressure quickly and it's absolutely no surprise with two commanding rounds so far. They're going to want to really put G2 to the sword here whilst they're on the attack. Get as much advantage out of this as they can. As you said, Des, we've seen leads turned over on this map. So Team Secret will know that even a 5-1 half could be fragile. It is the sort of map that it can be turned around, but might as well take advantage of it to uh, make here while the sun shines. So they say, so they say. In this spot, though, 60 seconds in, no early deaths coming out, so no cheeky engagements coming out. Admittedly, outside of the last round today, there have been a lot of slow initial engagements, should we say, not really much in the way of early aggressive spawn peaks and such. We did see one beautiful one coming out of WTG on Chalet about half an hour ago. But outside of that, it has been a little bit more peaceful. And sure enough, it's the same story here. Secret just working their way down from the north side in towards site. Much of G2 holding off towards that side. But we did earlier on have Citizen. At least now it's Virtue still holding down inside the basement. And maybe, just maybe, looking to pull off a little bit of a cheeky flank. However, West Main does have a drone set on it. Thank you very much, Easy. And that's going to be an important one because if Virtue is able to move up here uncontested, I'm not sure if they just came off the drone at the wrong time there. Virtue will take it out and it may well be that they're on a way. They, they have absolutely no idea. He's moving in here for free. This has got to be a freebie for Virtue, but I don't think he knows the man's in dining. Des, they've absolutely no idea. They're in the same room together, but they don't know the presence of each other. Slebin takes a few shots. That's got to alert Virtue. He knows that somebody's around him, Slebin. He's just... Peeking, prowling, looking, trying to find the man, but they just don't know where each other is. This is absolute maximum. This is tension up to 11 here as the they try to just hunt each other down. Slebin goes back to holding his long angle. I think he knows that Virtue is down here with him, but not that he is quite so close. Meanwhile, Jonka finds a head bull, head, head, head shot, bull. A head <laughs> shot onto Pack Bull. And this is where it's going to come down. Virtue is the winner of that battle that we saw over 30 seconds. Just so, so patient, holding his time, trigger discipline at the max and hungry. Manages to find Kendrew and it's five versus two as we head into the last 25 seconds. Looks like it should be the bounce back for G2 here. A flawless round on the way in round three. It took a couple of rounds, but finally have arrived on Chalet. They paid the taxi driver, got their bags out and are settled in for the night. 15 seconds remain here for Keenan to work some magic, but we know how unlikely that is going to be in his current predicament. Repelling his way forward and hungry takes the freebie. The flawless round for G2 comes in a much better round than what we saw in the first couple. Yep, definitely needed that one, G2. I think coming out of this half on the defence, you would normally say if you can be, you know, get a 4-2 half, the defenders don't really mind that too much on Shallow, I wouldn't have thought. 3-3, three, three, you'd be thinking, yeah, that's pretty good. We're coming into the attack. We just need to, to do better than they did. But I think at 4-2, G2 won't think it's the end of the world. They'll be looking for better, don't get me wrong, but... It wouldn't be terrible, but that said, G2 have struggled on the attack a little bit lately, as Jess picked up on. And so, you know, will they be able to take full advantage of the sort of little attacker buff that we seem to see on Chalet? 
not quite sure. I guess time will tell. The mirror is going to be the big one for me. We spoke about the kind of flex role that you often see players like Hungry fitting into. And for this team on attack, he's played seemingly everything this season. We've seen Monty, we've seen Ying, we've seen Capital. Not so much this season, sorry, part of last season as well. But he's become that kind of filling the gaps and really augmenting the team was the way that I described it before, where he would play those slightly different things that are a bit not so much out there, but maybe away from what the meta would assume. And I'm looking forward to seeing if Capital is in that lineup in the attacking side for G2. Here, at least on the defensive side, it's going to be him stepping onto the mirror. So really doubling down on that sight hole capability as it is a return back towards Kitchen and Dining, where they last time brought along the Frost, which suggests that maybe you're looking for something more aggressive, either upstairs or here on the downstairs to give them some information. Reinforcements going up between dining and main lobby again, as you would expect. Pretty standard there. Hungry on the mirror. Always fascinated to see where those mirrors get placed. It can be a really transformative gadget. It's one of those that, you know, when she was originally brought in all the way back in Velvet Shell back in year two, it was, you know, a whole bunch of sites that just weren't viable up until that point became completely free to use. You were able to go there as a defender because of that gadget and that is how powerful Mira can be and why we often see her banned out. But available here, she will be brought along. Uh, she got a very good pick rate actually when available, Des. She's in the top five at the minute for defenders uh, in stage three. She was at fifth when we came into the day. I think she was at about a 35% pick rate when available. So any time that she isn't banned out. I always look at it like that. You know, if, if the players have the actual... Op or the option to click on that operator, do they do it? And mirror 35% of the time and does very well. Indeed, we'll see just how well Hungry can do with it. I believe in APAC North, we've seen Alfama play the roaming mirror of all things. Pop down the uh, mirror windows, you should see four somewhere, then disappear into the basement of Chalet and then appear later in the round and try and make some magic happen. I doubt we're going to see him doing such a thing here for Hungry. They need him on site when you've already got players like Kaya, Citizen and Virtue looking to maybe cause a little bit of trouble. But on the attacking side here, minute and 15 in, we're looking at that top floor being opened up. And I think on the sheer basis, there's been a small change in the attacking line at the Hibana over the Thermite that we've seen for the last two rounds. Maverick we saw back in round number one. It's almost like they weren't expecting to come to this site, Ace. They were expecting something different. They've now got to make do. Kendrew just working there to open up everything that he can. There is some Mute Jammer action. You get actually a really nice picture of just exactly how that area of effect works for Mute there. Um, just seeing certain pellets opening up and others not, but it does allow the nade oh, in, which the is right the important open. point. And that is... Does it know I want to be shot off, but yeah, yeah, there's a bit the, of a gap a, in between. The problem, right? They shot off the other one. I think you could just see the tip of it and shot it off instead. So you get this kind of weird, like, not so much a cone shape. I guess like a snowman in a way that you'd normally see being opened up using six pellets. In this case here, you won't get the full thing opened up. So they might be able to prone and get their way through. It's not exactly desirable. Patball has found his way inside of the basement. And with two of them down here now looking to see what they can nade from below. Hungry holding behind his mirror window. Doesn't oh. know that his life is done and dusted. That is an absolute freebie. Beautiful from Pipeball, but not only does it get the opening kill, it also allows him to open up that mirror window, and that is just removing such essential utility from the side of G2. Now, Virtue's holding on inside of office for the time being. This could be a real power position as the round goes on because it's going to give him the verticality to try and hold off on a plant, but the kills come in, and that is Jonka cleared out. It's all down to Virtue, realistically. The diffuser going down, Citizen gets one, but traded straight back out by Pipeball. It's all up to Virtue now. They know he's inside of office. He finds a headshot. Now, can he find the vertical angle onto the planter? No, he cannot. Sleben shuts him down in what is essentially a late trade. And that's going to be Team Secret taking round four and puts them 3-1 now. Oh, Tim. I don't want Fresh to be 3-0 on predictions and maybe 0-3 and three today. That's not ideal. He's going to be insufferable. I mean, again. to be honest, Des, you've, you've probably... You've sowed the seeds of your own destruction there. How have I? When you've had good weeks on the predictions, you see, this is why I'm always, you know... <laughs> Don't you dare say you're always humble. I'm a gracious about it. winner. No, you're not. I'm a gracious and humble winner so that I don't lend myself and lead myself into this situation, does. Uh, production, can we just send Fresh home? <laughs> just just don't let him be. Je Jess can manage it by the, manage the desk by herself. She's, she's a big girl by now. She can do it. I don't believe we need Fresh anymore. <laughs> send him back. Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> we can go into it all day. I do want to touch on this name once again, because this is a real streamer it's a as well. Absolutely like, beauty from Pat. It's a really good passage by the setup as well, but you see that off on the drone. Look at the one off to the left as well, so you get the extra kind of coverage down West Main. That's all good for stopping people pushing up West Main, but what if they don't want to push up West Main? They just want to nade you from below. You've got no coverage down there, unfortunately. 
And imagine now that a few have seen that come through, you'll be looking at that and thinking, ooh, if G2 play this map again, never play that. Guess what? Patball showed us for free how to clear the player off. Exactly that. And that's one of the beauties of watching these players play. It gives you plenty that you can take away and try in your ranked games, your unranked, your casuals, whatever it might be. Give it a whirl. See if it pans out. It might just be an absolute free before you. Now, moving into round five, we're going to be back up to the top floor. It is going to be a master hold. Actually, the first time I say back up, but it's the first time. We've seen Bar twice, we've seen Kitchen twice, but this is the first time G2 oh. will take us up to Master Bedroom. I love that. It's just like, just take a quick peek. Oh, hello, there's a Rooney right there. And Citizen, sure enough, he's going to bolt himself away. Imagine he saw the fact that he was on the drone. Given Slevin has lost the drone and one is in back pocket, it would suggest indeed he has been spotted out. And he's now back, like back hit, back pedaled himself back upstairs, away back towards site. Uh, happy that it's collected a little bit of information away from the other side. Walls being electrified off, so clearly a very big focus on keeping this south side wall locked up, closed off from the side of Secret. But equally, when you've got a buck on side ace, it's not the end of the world to clear that sort of thing out. You can just get underneath the mezzanine with the buck, shoot out the floor and see those electric balls where they're spaced around. It's why you've got them on top of the cabinets there. I'm not sure where the second one was to keep the wall electrified, but I imagine that one would be a little bit easier to clear off. You would expect so. Kendrew just looking here to get himself on that solarium window and apply a bit of north-sided pressure. But Citizen, he needs to be aware of that, playing in and around the bathroom door there. He's got Virtue backing him up for the time being, but in comes the challenge. Oh. However, Slevin and Gomfi both find themselves shut down by Virtue in a big opening flurry, and that is what G2 needed right now. Jonker gets in on the party as well, takes down Packball, and that leaves us five versus two at the halfway mark. That was a little bit of overzealousness, I think, coming out of secret there as well. They were so keen to get inside a trophy and start their push up towards Solar that thought, you know what, send two of us in, we play for the trade, it's not a problem. That's all good if you're suppressing the guy that's at the south side of Kit kitchen, less so if you don't realise that there is someone playing on the solar stairs and it is the easiest 2k that Virtue is going to find all day, no one looking his way as he picked up those two and now has basically already ended the round for the side of G2. It's going to require a bit of a miracle for Keenan and Kendry to get this one open, they haven't got a way of getting open the uh, the stuff from below, so the wall from below, floors from below, whatever you want to call them in that case to get rid of the electro claws, so they're going to have to try and peek their way through. Kendry does find one but then gets swung off towards library stairs, Keenan one back but now Surely he's expecting another swing to come through. He's got plenty of bullets, but enough headshots to connect. I'm not too sure about that one, Sheaf. 35 seconds to play with as the first mote rings out. I don't know. This one looks a bit dicey, Ace. Glad to see he cancels the reload with 108 bullets in the magazine. You're probably all right for a little while yet, yeah, Keenan. Just going in and trying to get the utility cleared out, get the walls opened up, just trying to give himself any opportunity here. But those toxic babe canisters, they keep raining out from Jonka. The last one has been deployed, but look at the clock. 15 seconds left to go. Keenan's just trying to find himself anything. He knows that it's likely to be impactless at this point. Cannot find anything. Kayak shuts him down, and that's going to be G2 taking another round. And that's well-timed for them. Does it gives them an opportunity now to get themselves onto 3 3 at the half? It is, yeah, really good way to pull themselves forwards. For G2, I believe this is that timeout, sorry, no secret timeout that we thought we might see a little bit earlier on. So, as good as things have played out for them so far, clearly not content with just three rounds, they want to make sure this turns into a fourth before we step into the next half. And I think so far for secret. Pretty good game, Ace, because when we came with Warriors today after how their performance looked against Kavana last week and how the stage has generally gone for them so far, this is looking like a pretty capable attacking team. But we'll give a small lean to one, it's against the shaky G2, and two, it is also on Chalet. Couple of important factors that you pick up there, Des, you know, but the thing is, as I always say, it's not always about the performance right now immediately, it's also about the ripple effect that it can cause. You know, yes, it may well be that Secret are looking good on attack because as you say, it's G2 have been a bit shaky on and off. It's shallow, but it's a foundation. They go into the next play day knowing that they've had that good attacking week and it can just become a real habit. And so it's good for secret either way. It doesn't matter the reasoning for it. They need to just take the confidence from it and build from there. And this round would be really, really helpful for secret. If they can get this one done, 
you then have that little bit of comfort coming in on the defence. They know that the defensive half is going to be tougher here against G2, but if they can get themselves 4-2, you got that little bit of leeway. You can think, well, you know, even if G2 come back with a 4-2, at least we've got the shot at overtime. We've got something there that we can play for. If you come in at 3-3 and you think G2 are going to have a better half attacking, then it maybe starts to get into the mental game a little bit. The, the mind games come in and you start beating yourself potentially. One thing to remember is, you know, coming into today as well, we looked at how the stand is currently sat. And as a reminder for those you aren't 100% sure, you've got Rogue sat in eighth place, just outside of any kind of relegation scrap on 25 points. Secret at the start of this game, they sit on 20 points. They are five behind Rogue, and Rogue still, of course, have yet to play at the end of the day. Heroic are now sat on 17 after the one point they got in overtime. So there are three points between Secret and Auto Relegation, but five points between them and Rogue in safety. So it kind of feels like... If if this game does carry on for Secret the way that it's kind of started with some, you know, good fortune and coming out ahead in rounds, they walk away with three points here. That could be a phenomenal way of keeping themselves secure here in EUL and potentially starting to threaten Rogue and say, hey guys, how do you fancy a second year fighting in relegations? And I guarantee you, Rogue want to avoid that. Leon said before, two or three months of stress just waiting for that day to come around when you play against the second place Challenger League team. No one wants that. Absolutely not. And I think, you know, this is what we've got to remember. At that end of the table, between Heroic, Secret and Rogue particularly, any three-point win is absolutely massive. I mean, any, any win at all will be big, but a full three points just one of them could be decisive because, you know, the reality is we've got to be honest about it and the likelihood is that these teams will probably lose more than they win between now and the end of the season. So any win that they get could be a big, big difference. In fact, <laughs> we nearly have the peak coming round on library stairs and it does come Citizen. Just a little bit sloppy there, moving round on the library stairs, Sleben ready for it and shuts him down with a headshot on the long angle. Absolute beauty from him decimates the man and gives Secret another advantage here. Five versus four. A comfy slide from Sleben in blue and to our citizen, as you saw, decimated, removed from the field, eradicated from Chalet. And that's not someone you want to be losing early in the round. Virch not doing so bad so far, but now he's got his woes doubled as Kayak also slips out of existence. It's just the three left for G2 here in Secret are looking to use that timeout effectively. And as we said, don't leave this at a 3-3 half. Push on now and get the 4-2 on the attack inside. That's what it's all about. Taking a commanding approach to this round, getting in there and getting it won. They are, of course, attacking onto Bar and Gaming, so Virtue is still holding an important position inside of Library at the minute, but Gonfi is there, poised, ready, and strikes like a rattlesnake does. As soon as the opportunity is there, quick as the eye can see, Gonfi hits the headshot onto Virtue, allowing Kendrew in to start getting that diffuser down. And there we go, Gonfi wow. with another two from the upside down repel onto the mezzanine. The man's unstoppable, he barely gets a look at the first one and Team Secret take their first half 4-2. Really clinical first half coming out from Secret at points. You can ignore if you like round three with the sudden flawless coming out of the side of G2 with Virtue getting the West Main flank coming off for example and maybe even forgive the 2k coming out of Virtue at the start of round five inside of Trophy. Otherwise it has been the Secret show but it's no secret just how well they're playing so far today. Now we get the switch and secret start out in Master and Office. For G2, we mentioned earlier on that banner where the Wamai, does it open us up to things like the Capital? Apparently not, as right now, the lean instead is coming in for Citizen to move away from playing more nade-wielding operators and bringing along six like Secret did, and instead steering in towards that Twitch, which I've made no secrets of, Ace. Massive fan, I think she's really starting to build a place in the meta, and more and more teams are starting to pick her up. Certainly have. I mean, we saw Citizen bring Twitch for a round or two last week. He then switched back onto the Iana, so we'll see, um, you know, whether that sticks through the entire attacking half or whether he sort of bounces backwards and forwards or not, likely depending on the site and particularly how important it's going to be to clear out gadgets and utility as obviously Twitch excels at that, especially now that that range has been increased. We see it uh, much more successful. Now then, round seven, it's going to be the first defence for Team Secret. It's going to be Master and Office and G2 Dez. If they are going to show us that they can attack in stage three, the time is now. This is it. Yeah. 
I feel for both, it's kind of the not not so much a last chance, but this is play day five. Let's not forget. Let's get in there. Of nine. Let's get in there. This is this is the halfway mark. This is the time to really stake your claim and show what you can do. For G2, if they really want to be going to the major in November and showing what it is they're made of, now is the time to really be getting a win against a lower tier team. For Secret, if they want to start their comeback and a chance of safety, now is also the time to start making Rogue feel a little bit fearful of what could yet be coming. So I agree, it's a massive game for the pair of them. Let's look at how things are shaping up though for G2. A big focus up towards the north side. Kayak holding out down towards Trophy and a couple here starting to threaten on towards Solar. And needing to make sure no one is playing on half wall should now start being a little more I won't say so much secure because there is a man holding a shotgun on the other side of that wall. That is not someone you want to come face to face with. But at the very least, a bit more cozy. They are sure this north side is a bit more free. Well, that's the danger. It's certainly within range. If you try to repel in there, he's gonna the man's going to hear the repel sound and he's just going to pop out and blast the shotgun. He doesn't even really need to aim from that range. So need to be very careful. Need to be make sure that they're getting him moving before they try and move in themselves. Now, we're getting towards the halfway point. It's been... Reasonably tentative so far from G2. They've not taken too much map control. They've not found themselves a kill. They're just sort of posturing and poising at the minute, waiting to get themselves into position. And then the execute is going to come along now then. Jonker, there's a man moving across just in front of him. We've got the silhouette. He's just needs to be careful there. He's caught up in his ADS. It's Kendra inside a bathroom and there are lines of sight opened up. So just needs to be careful that he doesn't lose track of him. Uh, Kendra steps out, tries to take a little attack, coming towards the final minute here. And we still really haven't had too much of a coming together for these teams. Uh, I'm just waiting to see if Hungry dares go for a push in here. If they know that Kendra's inside a bathroom, he can swing that window and looking to present the challenge. You've got Virtue playing off the office window, the uh, sorry master double window, looking to push onto the one man trying to pull down from the bathroom that is Kendra. So he's under a lot of pressure. And this is when Hungry now chooses to swing. Maybe a little bit mistimed, but Kendra is still going to find Yonker, the man that was on the solar repel. And I believe that is also diffuser down inside the solar. So now they've got to focus on unseating Kendra. Great opener for Team Secret. Let's not forget they only need to get three rounds on the defense and that will be the win for them in regulation time. So everyone that they can pinch is big. But Des, here comes Citizen. He's moving slowly. He's moving quietly up to Piano Door. They have absolutely no idea it's a freebie for him and he gets a double for his trouble take impact ball down and that leaves us now four versus three g2 suddenly swinging things into their advantage 14 seconds left to go the challenge comes in from virtue but sleban wins it out and slays from far away nine seconds left to go gomfi finds kayak and secret are fighting back days they are fighting hard as kendrew finds the shotgun onto hungry and all of a sudden g2 fall like dominoes one after another and team secret take their first defensive round. That's probably another of so many frustrating rounds coming out for Citizen as well. Really opens the round up with a 2k on the south side, but the four-man push coming in from the rest of G2 on the north in absolute shambles. Kendrew finding the one as Yonker came repelling in, drops down into Trophy, finds another as Hungry collects the diffuser and gets a kill onto him. It's just clean and clinical up to the north. Down south a little bit messier, but when it's only one man causing a bit of trouble, there is no concern. Secret are at five and two and G2 have got to start seeing the light for that November Major slowly starting to fade before them. This is the problem and that will have an impact as much as, you know, these guys are all professionals and they can put that sort of thing from their minds and just focus on the round that's in front of them. They're still in the in the back of your brain. You know how important it is. You know how crucial it is. And you know that you could be looking back at these moments in a few short weeks knowing that that's where it all went wrong or that was a big part of it. And if G2 are going to stand up and be counted, Des, now is the time. They have to get this round for my money. If Team Secret can get to 6-2 here, I can't see G2 bringing it back to overtime. Not with the way things are going at the minute. Got to give a nod to Kendra in that last round, though, as well. Dancing around bathroom like a ballerina, up and down between the half wall, moving his way to challenge onto the double window inside of Master, and found himself two or three kills in the process. You might look again towards players like Hungry and go, OK, well, where was the timing on the swing? Like, you knew pressure was being applied, yet no one was there to challenge. When he was challenging onto the Master window, that surely is when the call comes in right. Watch window, the guy is going to push back north. This is an absolute freebie for you. G2 just 
ever so slightly misaligned. And we said this about them on day one, if you recall, in their game against Na'Vi on bank. Some of their attacks, some of their defenses, just not quite all on the same page at the same time, whereas it's felt like it's the, the opposite story for their opponents. And that seems to have carried all the way through to play day number five. Really does, Citizen. Just buzzing around on the Twitch drawn at the minute, taking out the default cams. Going to move on to his second switch run and just continue his job, trying to take down a few more. Just all about denying as much information as possible. Utility as he goes as well. Just tell it, taking out an Elagur's not mine there, which could have impeded the progress of any attack coming in through that position. But This is one thing I wanted to test. I keep meaning to do it, and I always forget every time I get into a game, is what's the kind of vertical angle you're now able to shoot at? Oh, please. Oh, that's wild body block, to be fair. What's the vertical angle you can now shoot at with the laser? Because before, the piddly bit of string that she used to fire out was like, it was quite a slight short angle, about 30, 40 degrees or so. It wasn't very high. Whereas I do think the laser has now got a slightly higher one, but I need to test exactly what it is. It does certainly seem to have a, a wide a range. Honestly, mate, she's been buffed so much, it is ludicrous. As you say, an important uh, bit of play there from Sleben, just protecting that mirror window. Look at Citizen, he's looking for the long angle on it, but Sleben is alert and alive and gets it taken down. Kendrew finds another opener, second in a row for him. Packball with a freebie on the Nitro onto Virtue, leaving us now four versus three as Kendrew does lose his life in a trade along the way, but that's not the end of the world for Team Secret. The mute is gone, but there's still important utility left on the board and there are players in every single position that Team Secret need them here and G2 are being asked serious questions now and they are going to have to find an answer here inside around eight. Three versus four and it is starting to look dire. Yeah, I thought for a second then they didn't see Keenan backing himself away out of the half wall but no, do spot him on his way out and gets a little red ping on his tail just to say as much or at least give acknowledgement to him that he has been spotted and getting out is the best course of action. 40 seconds to play with here for the last three members of G2. They've got flashes, they've got smokes, they've got frags, they've got so much still to play with Ace that you start thinking, okay, when's it getting used? Where is it getting used? What is the game plan here, G2? Because otherwise you're staring down the barrel of a potential overtime, but it will be a four round climb to get there. With the loss of Hungry on the sledge, we're starting to see the real impact that that can have. Citizen established upstairs and the best he can do, Des, is try to shoot through the floor and open up some small holes to peek through. John Jonker does find one. Kayak with another. This is what G2 need. Jonker goes in and tries to get that diffuser down. Packball with an important trade. Two versus two. Jonker has to come off the diffuser. He's stuck what? all alone. Packball with a big triple to finish things off for Secret. And they are cruising right now. G2 unable to find an attack. And Team Secret take themselves onto match point. I mean this in the kindest way, but Packball is not the name you think of when it comes down to clutch or multi kill in games like these, yet you look at his push in through mud. You look at that round just there. The man is hitting his shots today. It is going wonderfully well. And I believe G2 have just called in themselves a tactical timeout, understandably, at the last second. As indeed, once again, things are completely collapsing before their very eyes. And it's like I say every time we come to these timeouts, I always look at who's doing the talking. Is it IGL Kayak? Is it Ben doing the talking, Citizen? Or is it Shaz behind the scenes doing the talking? So mix of the two normally of Citizen and Shaz. And it looks like here it is Coach Shaz stepping in to have a few words. Ben is uh, Citizen, by the way. Just in case you didn't know. Des is a... Uh... Best mate. Yeah. Friends with top players, it's not a big thing. Uh, no big deal, just, big yeah, deal. just whatever. So we are coming in to what could be the final round here. 6-2, Team Secret currently lead. And if you've just joined us, you hear me correctly. G2 are really, really struggling here to keep this Team Secret team at bay. They came through 4-2 um, in their defensive half, which was the first half. And... Sorry, no, they're attacking half 4-2, which we sort of expected. We thought that we might see G2 come out and just deliver a little bit more here, Des, but they just can't get going at the minute. They can't get this train back on the tracks and Team Secret are taking full advantage of that. It feels like they've got them on the ropes. It feels like they're just raining blows in and that G2 are ducking, weaving, just doing everything they can to keep themselves in it. But you just know that knockout punch is coming from Team Secret and you got a feeling it's coming sooner rather than later at this rate. I mean, how much... I don't want to say how much is a timeout really going to do for you because we've seen teams call timeouts and completely flip the momentum of a game only for a team to call a timeout like G2 have done now later in the game and you're left wondering what comes next. 
But that momentum is just very, very firmly with Secret right now. There haven't been many close rounds. Pretty much all of them relatively decisive, no matter which team has walked away the winner. And given it is 6-2, well, 75% of those rounds have gone the way very convincingly of Secret. So you start to think, surely, in the next four, there is at least one more waiting for them to get it over the finish line and really open up a dogfight with Rogue. So we're going to go to Bar and Gaming now for the third defensive site. We've seen Secret so far move through Master and Kitchen winning both. They've done a very good job at holding on to the upstairs, but they've also not thrown too many men at it. They've dropped away. They only lost Kendrew last time around, and G2 were left still trying to attack onto site and still having four defenders to try and get through. So that's something that Secret have gauged pretty well, the ebb and flow of the round, and when it's time, to cut your losses, dip away and give up that map control, but I don't think they'll be too keen to give up on library too soon because it can be very, very pivotal on at this site if you can get those vertical angles, particularly down through the hatch so that you can cover off the split door and it just gives an opportunity. That is definitely a much higher angle. Definitely. You wouldn't be able to hit that before. Like, that is ridiculous. You know why that is as well? Before, it wasn't a thing because otherwise you could shoot out the full cams very comfortably during prep phase, whereas now... You, of course, don't have the shock drones during prep phase. You have a normal drone. So Twitch, in case you didn't notice, has three drones available to her now, which is ludicrous. And with the ability to take away that restriction, you get the max range one, so it makes perfect sense. I love it. Slabin taking the drone out inside a library. He's just supporting Kendrew, who is playing in the library box, and they're going to try to hold on to that for as long as possible. Now, what is G2's answer to this problem going to be? They've moved away from double window, so they're not going to approach directly into library. There was a frost mat just inside of the window position by Pack Bull as well to try and keep them out. Citizen has moved himself into basement. He's going to potentially come head to head with Keenan here, but it's Slebin who comes head to head with Hungry, and there's only one winner. Gonfi's in support here, Des. He might just catch them out. There's the main stairs. Does he get one? Yes, he oh, does. No. Gonfi's going to try to retire, but he gets shut down. Doesn't matter as Kendrew finds virtue. It's four versus two right now and only halfway through the round. It's all falling to bits for G2 and it just looks like they've lost their way at this point, Des. It looks like they could play all night and not win a round and you've got to feel for them because Secret are just on top of them. The problem is as well, this wasn't even around the side. This was downstairs in the basement where all these firefights were kicking off but as you say the four versus two in 60 seconds it's kayak it's yonka he's got a sign in his office saying i'm still mf kayak is one way of wording it but i don't know how much he can do <laughs> all right yonka there comes the challenge onto kendrew gets the instant headshot still three remaining and a bit of time to play with that diffuser is down outside they've got to get the recovery effort on towards that as both start to step their way across the worst thing of course this is outside so they'll have to push all the way across to be able to get that one back up look to find out a member or two get a kill or two onto the other side and get the plant down that is a lot of effort to pull back on their side a bit of late clearance coming through onto the shield at the top of library stairs they've now got themselves inside of library because smartly so secret have said we can drop away we don't keep on needing to be aggressive here we can afford to just play on site and let them come at us and sure enough here they come 15 seconds still to play they're going to do this one without the diffuser they want these kills they need to find the players the drop's got to come through do they even have any idea where the players are with no drones on side the answer is no. In comes the drop. They see the one. Can't find him. Gets down and there's the shutdown coming in from Sleben. Secret with a 7-2 victory over G2. Not a scoreline we thought we'd see as G2's woes go from bad to worse. Despite their best efforts, G2 tried to keep a secret there, Des, but they just couldn't keep them at bay. Team Secret just had an answer to everything G2 tried to throw at them and it was an impressive performance from them and boy does that spot.